For our honeymoon, my husband and I went to Paris. We arrived at night and stayed at a hotel right by Charles de Gaulle Airport with the intention to check into our Airbnb the next morning, which was located in the heart of Paris. Morning came and we received an email from our Airbnb host that something came up and our reservation had been canceled. So we thought, no big deal, let's just find another place to stay. Lo and behold, everything was completely booked up. The only available Airbnb in Paris was a tiny, tiny room in a shared home for $800 a night. It was that or a place three hours away from city center. All our plans for this newlywed couple had been ruined. We began to panic a little, thinking this cannot be happening on the very first night of our honeymoon. We felt stranded. The more we panicked and stressed, the less things appeared to be working out. After a few hours of doing everything we could but to no avail, I thought to myself a simple but powerful thought. Trust and let go. God does not leave you stranded. So I looked at my husband and said, okay, let's gather our luggage, order a cab, head into Paris, and let our higher power guide us to where we are meant to be. So off we were, hungry, homeless, and in a foreign city, with the only knowledge of the language I had being bonjour, mon amour. I'm not sure how far it would have gotten me to greet every person with a uh, hello, my love. (laughs) But one thing I knew to be true, an intention to be guided goes a long way. We ended up at Pittsman, a famous kosher falafel spot, which was our way of experiencing a taste of home when we were so lost. At one point, a tiny old French man with a long beard suspenders and round glasses came up and asked us in very broken English, you like food? We were very pleased with the food, but I think he could sense that we were still a bit on edge. He asked where we came from and where we were staying. It was as though God knew exactly which question to place on this little man's lips. We soon learned that this man, Mr. Pitzman, was an Orthodox Jew and the owner of Pitzman's falafel joint. We had told him we had no place to stay, and he summoned us to follow him a few blocks away. So schlepping our luggage with us, we had no clue where we were being taken. He got into the driver's seat of his blue van, and he told us to get in. So my husband and I looked at each other and figured, all right, we've got nothing to lose. There was something about Mr. Pitzman that we just trusted. He felt like this little angel that was placed in our lives at the exact right time. On our way to wherever we were headed, Mr. Pitzman made a few phone calls in French. So, of course, we still had no idea what the conversation was about. But when we arrived to our destination... Miss Pittsman, a sweet little old French lady, opened the door to her apartment in the heart of Paris and saw us to our room where she had prepared for us clean sheets, towels, and food. The Pittsmans took us in, showed us around Paris, and became family. I looked at my husband and then looked up at the sky and I just felt God give me a forehead kiss. And in that moment, I remembered that the end result exists in the initial thought. Sometimes a little thought, an intention to trust and let go is all that's needed for God to be like, I got you, I love you, and I won't leave you stranded. Sharing is caring, so if you liked what you heard, pay it forward. And as always, happy manifesting. Happy manifesting.